This is Kelly, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Extend my thanks to our Matua um, Ra and Kipuna Kurua and everyone from Tapatahi for bringing us all together. And um, I have um, been asked to speak briefly because I am, have the great privilege of being involved in a project that's happening here in Porirua with Ngati Toa Rangatira, um, and that is working on Te Tiriti based assemblies. So, shall I just launch? straight into that and I have a couple of our, my um, friends and colleagues here as part of that, Sharon and Rosalind is here as well and Haimana is a great member, founding member of our um, Te Reo Nga Tamata. So we, are, yeah, brief history is that we, um, we actually formed at a conference that Mike gave us a great um, dialogue at as well back in 2019. Uh, it was a conference about Citizens' Assemblies for Climate and the idea of mounting a national assembly um, for Aotearoa to make pragmatic moves towards better policies around climate. And that, uh, that kaupapa didn't exactly get followed because <coughs> the consensus in the room was that it needed to be Te Tiriti based and there weren't enough mana whenua or tangata whenua in the room for us to have a constructive dialogue. So a group of us uh, volunteered to become a working group and take that um, mahi and see where we could go with that. And that quite quickly came to a Te Upoko Te Ika group and we decided to focus regionally at first and then um, and we spent a year or so kind of um, doing our research and talking to councils and environmental groups in various places around the region. Uh, and then we had the great fortune of connecting with Ngāti Tua Rangatira who really, um, we really gelled, what's the word, I'm not sure, we sort of, we aligned on this kaupapa and um, shared a similar philosophy around the need for really radical transformation of our governance systems in order to produce ubiquitous solutions that bring everyone along. Um, and so we have had the pleasure of working with them since the end of 2020. And over that time, we have brought together a group of Porirua community leaders who are representing uh, all different aspects of Porirua from sports group to churches to health workers to schools uh, to businesses and, and retailers and you know, the, the list goes on and it's definitely not um, finished so if you are a community leader from Porirua in the room and you feel like you would like to be involved in this or don't know about this we would love to hear from you. Um, and this, this group of Porirua community leaders has formed what they currently is being called a Talanoa and or the Porirua Community Leaders Forum. And so this is creating a network of leadership across the city which, uh, in, in which we're going to be able to have ongoing discussions about what are the issues that are facing Porirua and what um, can we collectively do to address them and for people to be giving each other support and at the same time being able to share that information with their constituencies and with all of the people in Porirua who otherwise aren't necessarily being picked up by our conventional um, democracy. Uh, so this group has agreed that this is um, a good thing to be working on and that they um, want to be led by Ngāti Toa and hosted by Ngāti Toa to do this work. And, uh, and also that as a, um, as a support mechanism for the Community Leaders Forum, a wānanga or a citizens' assembly, a Te Tiriti based citizens' assembly, will operate alongside the Community Leaders Forum in order to elicit the most um, truth-based and genuine information possible on really, really difficult issues, which is where we see citizens' assemblies being of the most use is on um, issues where there are massive trade-offs and um, things that uh, political leaders who are often under a lot of constraints and also um, lobbied by people who have private interests, so sort of taking that out of the equation and giving people the most, um, the most up-to-date and balanced information possible and then facilitating them to have these discussions that can come up with the best recommendations that meet the needs of the most people. 
So the Porirua Community Leaders Forum have agreed that the first assembly, and this will also be a standing forum for Porirua, the first assembly will be on climate. And now we are in the process of um, building that climate assembly, what that looks like, how we reach the people in Porirua, what is the information that people are going to receive, how does the tikanga operate, how does it look from a tetiriti framework, and um, and all of the other complexities that will, that will go into that, who is going to facilitate it, how do we make sure we hold people so that anyone from all levels of ability um, is able to participate equally uh, in order to come to these, um, yeah, sort of, I don't know, truth-based doesn't quite seem like the right way to put it because um, truth gets a hard rap these days. Uh, but um, I think all of my friends will, you know, we are all totally convinced that when you have ordinary people such as you and me and elected officials are just the same as all of us when we are put in a room and really confronted with the realities of how different uh, situations are affecting people and how different solutions might potentially affect people, then we can actually come to consensus around what is the best way forward for the majority and not the majority of people who vote because that's not representative of our population in the slightest, especially not in local elections and in Polydor in particular, we see really, really low turnout for local elections. So you could argue that it's not representative democracy at all. Um, as part of the Community Leaders Forum, the, the council are in this group as well. So from the very beginning, they have been in there as community leaders. I see them as community leaders of tax. So they've got some, <laughs> they've got some uh, responsibilities that we are all relying on them to do and they will have far better information about how to, how to do this as well. And with, the, with operating by consensus, and by consensus I mean you give your consent that this is an appropriate response as opposed to like every single person in the room thought this was a fantastic idea. It's that you talk about it enough that there is, a, uh, there is a consent given that there is an understanding and this is how it's going to move forward. So if we have a consensus in a citizens assembly model and then that is received by the community leaders who are also operating, operating by consensus, it becomes very, very difficult for elected officials to ignore those recommendations and to still hold their popular positions. They just won't be able to get the votes if they don't. So, so that's really different. That's something that is happening as a global first here in Porirua. Often there's not, or there's ne as far as we can tell, there's never this kind of community-led governance of a citizens' assembly. And the other thing that is completely unique to Porirua is working on a tetiriti framework. And this is something that is being looked at by um, both both people nationally and also internationally as how do we honour our agreements with indigenous nations at the same time as trying to uh, build a constructive way out of the diabolical situation that we find ourselves in. And just very briefly on that, it's really Tetiriti justice and climate justice have a similarity, I believe, in that the majority of the damage is actually historical so we can't just look to building forward and looking at how we move from here. We actually have to address what has happened in the past as well um, because the majority of the damage has, done, has been done in the past. So you can't just keep building on a horrible knot. You actually have to untie that knot in order to weave something that looks more uh, like an appropriate fastening. Um, so just, yeah, the, the model that we've come up with at the moment for the Tetiriti framework is very similar to the recommendations made by Mātiki Mai, the Independent Working Group for Constitutional Transformation. It doesn't matter if you're not familiar with that, but I would highly recommend that you do familiarise yourself with that work because it's really, really, really beautiful and very, very um, profound. And so what we have at the moment is within the Citizens' Assembly, um, alongside the Community Leaders Forum, there will be a Porirua-wide assembly which is a representative mix of the people of Porirua. So that includes Māori, uh, migrants, all, you know, every, every single person who's in Porirua will be represented as best as possible in the community-wide assembly. At the same time, there is a mana whenua assembly, which is an exclusively mana whenua space. Uh, they will determine who is in the room, how the dialogue happens, um, everything about how that assembly is run will be determined by Ngāti Tuarangatera. 
that both, both assemblies will receive the same question or the same remit, the same topic, so there's just one question for the whole model of this assembly. Both of the, the Mana Whenua Assembly and the Community Wide Assembly will both have the same question, they'll both have the same experts and the same um, resources um, and that will be co-designed by both Mana Whenua um, and a, a project design group for the whole thing as well and so both groups will come up with their recommendations which will then um, be taken into a relational assembly where um, Ngāti Tōra recommendations for both what they're going to do for themselves, which will be untouchable, that's what Mana Whenua have decided they are going to do based on having deliberated over the question that the Assembly has been asked to deliberate on. And they'll also have recommendations for what they think the city and potentially wider than that um, needs to be doing as well in response to the question which is not yet defined, but that's part of the co-design process that we're um, doing at the moment. And then um, the Community Wide <coughs> Assembly will also bring their recommendations into that space and the final part of this Tetaliti Assembly is to um, come to a, an agreement on what are the final recommendations that both in this relational space agree on that will then be put forward to whoever is responding to this um, assembly, probably City Council, likely um, some national agencies as well, government agencies, and then of course those recommendations will also go back to the Porirua Community Leaders Forum who are the people on the ground doing the mahi and they can use all of that information to affect, um, to, to bring into the work that they are doing in Porirua as well. So I think that's probably my five minutes. <laughs> that's a potted summary of where we're up to at the moment. Um, and I'm not sure if we want to just go through, we've got three speakers, so the lovely Molly Mellish here, a scientist, two scientists, which we are so fortunate to have, and Mike, so maybe we do five minutes each and then we'd really love to open it up to a, um, a dialogue and to hear if you've got climate projects that you're working on in Porirua, local stuff that, we'd, that everybody that you'd like to share with everyone here, um, and or questions to any of us speakers, so yeah, kia ora, kia ora. Thank you.